You guys, All right, Paul. You know what I would like to talk about, Paul? I would like to talk about the World Series. How it is the Houston Astros, and it is the Atlanta Braves. Yep. And the national sports media is saying this is a nightmare series for Major League Baseball because it's the city of Houston and the city of Atlanta, and nobody cares. That's what he's trying to suggest. And it's like, isn't that something wrong with the fucking league? Yes. Because the Super Bowl, it doesn't matter who plays. Everybody's watching. Everybody's excited. Why is it that baseball, Major League Baseball, I mean, uh, uh, basketball's and uh, NBA basketball's another one with David Stern, that little slippery eel there, where he was, who's your dream finals? He goes, the Lakers versus the Lakers. It's just like, what kind of league are you running here? Yeah. It's so a, if the it's Minnesota Timberwolves problem. comes there, nobody gives a fuck because you allowed all this. And you look at both leagues, both leagues allow pile on teams. I can't dispute that. Hey, Paul, I'm making points here. Because you know what? If the Jacksonville Jaguars play in the Super Bowl against, let's say, the whatever, the, the Cardinals, I'm in. I'm in. No, I, I want to see the Cardinals go. Yeah, Cardinals are exciting because they're undefeated. Yeah. But no, any team, no, no, but any team. My point is any team in the NFL, you're going to watch. You're watching the Super Bowl. 100%. Baseball. And then, then you've got these other leagues where they, they, they treat it like those Ocean's Eleven's movies where they get 52 fucking movie stars, you know, all in the same movie. That's what they, they that's their, their dream shit. Is they, the NBA has basically decided that it's okay if the Miami Heat, the Lakers, Golden State Warriors just out of the draft became one of those darling cities that it's like, okay, but I don't understand that at all. Like the Houston Astros, I mean, it's a great fucking story. That's a great story. They could actually win and be like, well, fuck you, man. You guys all said the only reason why we won is because we banged on those trash cans. Well, now there's no trash cans and we're kicking your ass again. There's a story there. Okay. And then you got all those rednecks down there doing the tomahawk chop. And who knew they had cell phones, Paul? I thought they were off the grid. I mean, I think it's fascinating. Uh, it's fascinating to me that the Atlanta Braves had to already built a brand new stadium. But all those white people didn't want to deal with the traffic. <laughs> it's just they didn't want to go to the inner city. So they just sold it to fucking Georgia Tech which turned it, I think, into a football field. And then they built a whole other stadium out by the suburbs so all those white people could feel comfortable. Now, here's the thing, Paul. I actually didn't buy the traffic. I didn't buy the traffic until a few weeks ago when I had to sit in it because they were playing, um, the Braves were playing the Dodgers. And the venue I was playing was like almost connected to the baseball team. So it was really exciting. But, dude, we sat in traffic. I was looking at the same traffic like for almost 30 minutes. I'm not – like 26 minutes we were sitting there like right. – I'm like, there's my gig. I could have walked – I could have crawled to my gig in the amount of time. And I'm thinking like, you know, people got flat screen TVs, Paul. You yeah. got a popcorn maker. You know, your wife is CrossFit and she looks good to you. Well, why are you going to go down to the stadium? If you Listen, if you love the team, it doesn't fucking matter. And speaking of loving a team, Bill, can I just talk about this for one second? I just need, I need, I need my soapbox for one second because I'm going to tell you guys something that gives me joy to no end. Okay. Me and my son, when I tell you we are all in with the Knicks, we should be four and oh, we are three and one. We put up 112 <laughs> points last night with no player getting 20. Okay, which from what I'm hearing from analysts, that's a healthy sign. Okay, the garden is back. We 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 drafted a young team. We got kids 26 <laughs> years and younger. Okay, we're fucking shooting the lights out of the fucking gym. We beat a good fucking, we beat a couple of good teams. We beat a good Sixers team last night. We went into double overtime against the Celtics. I'm going to tell you guys something right now. My New York Knicks are fucking back. The Garden is back. I'm not saying we're going to win a championship, but we're going to the playoffs. Uh, we might get out of the first fucking round. And I got to tell you something. I Nothing, nothing gives me more fucking. I mean, it's been years, dude. So I'm fucking thrilled. Paul, you are this excited every year. You say this every year, four games in. I just wish I had tape of you for 17 seasons in a row. Dude, we cleared the salary cap. Allen Houston is finally off our thing. We just got this guy every year, Paul. <laughs> Charlie Brown man. running in to kick that football. 
Paul, I'm excited for you. I'm excited for the Knicks. I don't understand why it has been this long. I mean, part of you is you had Isaiah Thomas in your front office. I mean, the guy helped bankrupt an entire fucking basketball league. God knows what he could do to one team. Because we we managed to have GMs that took a star two years from retirement and thought that the name would make us happy. And then he goes out there and he's a fucking shell of himself. And the garden is going, what the fuck? Boo, boo. And we're signing all these oldies. And now we finally look like we have the model of what the Warriors did by getting an RJ Barrett from Duke, by getting young players, by drafting these young players. And now they're starting to buy in. And let's be honest, Tim, uh, Tom Thibodeau is just – He's just a raspy, horse voice fucking coach that screams defense. He was screaming at them when they were up 30 the other night. They were up 30 the other night, and he's going, get off. What are you? And I'm like, that's what we fucking lacked. So I'm really excited. And again, I don't know. I'm happy Knicks, for you. I don't know if the Knicks are going to go far, but they're watchable, dude. They're fucking watchable. And it's fun. Dude, that's and- how beaten down a Nick fan is. You are this excited. You sound like you're going to win a championship, and you're just excited that you can watch them night in and night out i've been so fucking buried i'm I'm working on this movie script we're trying to sell this thing and we had to do a you know it was 120 pages long we had to try to get down to like between 90 and 100 so i have been dude i have not i didn't watch any football on sunday i have not watched anything i don't know what's going on you know i missed that whole fucking scandal there the stand-up scandal there uh i got to show you something that's fun you want to hear about like a liberal bias in the media like how they frame things. Yeah. So I'm not going to get into the whole fucking Chappelle thing, okay? Because, I, you know, I, I'm not getting involved in that. But it said, so Caitlyn Jenner. I love how she spells her name. C-A-I-T-L-Y-N. Like that was my thing. When, when Bruce became Caitlyn, I was like, what? Is this some Kardashian, you know, publicity stunt? But when I saw the way that she spelt that name. I was just like, there was tremendous thought behind that. I didn't even know you could spell the name that like that way. So Caitlyn Jenner has spoken out in support of comedian Dave Chappelle, right? And it, this is what it is, okay? No, no, she's transgendered, right? Right? Is that the proper terminology? She, I, I, you know what? I think, I hope I so. I think so, right? I think so, yeah. This is how they describe her. Dave Chappelle is 100% right. That's the quote. The former Republican candidate for California governor tweeted Tuesday. Like, is that even remotely her biggest credit? Even remotely. Like, right there, they're trying to subconsciously, I'm supposed to go, yeah, this conservative fucking son of a bitch. And it's just like, wait a minute. This person, this is a transgender person Um, who watched it and said, no biggie. We are it's in the fine. Weird- and then all of a sudden, Republican candidate. What, because you're transgender, you can't be a fucking Republican? Dude, we are in the weirdest times ever. I did the Verzi effect this week. Giannis Pappas was my guest, and we did the difference between a Sicilian vendetta and a Greek vendetta. And he made oh, the I point. Like and he made a point where he said, the Sicilians, you're dead to them. Like head cut off, and then you never talk about them like they're dead. Whereas the Greeks like an active enemy. They like to talk about the enemy. They like to see that person do bad. And I actually kind of, as sad as this is to say, I've kind of seen both on both sides where the Greeks like to look and go, they're fucking this, where the Italians are like dead to me, right? So I tweeted it out. I said, me and my buddy Giannis had a good discussion on the Verzi effect. Here's a clip I hope you enjoy. Giannis writes back something. He goes, yeah, man, Greeks are psychotic. Doesn't get more Greek than Giannis. Pappas, Giannis Pappas. He can speak Greek. And dude, they fucking canceled. They threatened to cancel his account. Instagram went at him. Twitter went at him saying you can't talk about a group of people being psychotic. I mean, it. we are in times that are fucking, uh, even my wife who just ignores this just goes, what's going on in the world? Like, what the fuck is going on? I know, every, every little thing becomes like the Cuban Missile Crisis. And what's funny is it's it's only like a thousand people talking about it. That's it. And everybody That's else it. is just sitting on the sidelines going, wow, they're really yelling at each other. It's a small group. You're right. It is. I don't understand. Like, this whole, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't, I mean, it's just, it's just like everybody just, you know, everybody fucking relaxed. Everything's going to be is, fine. Is this a cup? Can I say cup? Is it okay to, <laughs> is this a cup? Dude, I was watching the fucking 
the weather when I'm in the gym and the guy's talking about how we're going to have whiplash weather and all this, to, essentially talking about the beginning of our ability to live on this planet. It's like the end of the world and he's doing it with the fucking smile on his face and there's no uproar. Like the uproar right now, I think should be about fucking sustainability, plastic recycling. Dude, I, have, I, I, I swear to God, dude, you put that shit in recycling. Oh, I fucking recycle. You stick shit in a blue trash can. And I fuck it. I bet I, you, the percentage of that shit that still ends up in the ocean is fucking criminal, dude. It's fucking yeah. criminal. I don't know what we're doing. That is the most insane thing to me. But that shit, that shit is way on the back pages. Way on the back pages. And um, I don't know. It's crazy. But I just thought that that was, if I ever I saw a, a classic example, you know, who even remembers that she ran for, for governor? She didn't was, even get anywhere. No, it was a cup of coffee. It was like two days. Yeah. Yeah, she yeah. came out. She went down looking. The point of that <laughs> they argument. sent her back down to Hershey. The point of that was to say Republican. That's it. The point That's of it. that article was to say Republican. To That's say it. that and then to fucking try to get give you that little earworm and then not have you listen to what she has to say after this.